not all type of antigens can result in clustering of B cell receptors. Therefore, B cell activation pathways are of two types, T cell independent pathways and T cell dependent pathways. In T cell independent pathways, the antigen itself is able to cause BCR clustering and initiate B cell proliferation and differentiation. So they do not require the help of uh, T cells. That's why it's called thymus independent pathway because it involves antigen which is thymus independent. The second pathway is called T cell dependent pathway which is dependent upon the T cells for activation and proliferation of B cells. That's why it's called thymus dependent antigen pathway. Now let us study both these pathways in detail. First pathway we are going to discuss is T cell independent pathway. It's a pathway in which the antigen is T cell independent. That means it is itself able to cause clustering of B cell receptors. So such antigens have multiple repeated epitopes which results in clustering. These antigens are generally non-protein in nature. Generally they are polysaccharides like glycolipids and as well as nucleic acids. So but how this pathway results in little or no memory cells? Antigens that are large multivalent polymers that binds multiple IgD and M on B cell receptors will directly stimulate humoral immunity independent of any helper T cell involvement. That's why this pathway is called thymus independent pathway. It involves two signaling. The first signal is provided by binding and cross-linking due to antigens which are non-protein antigens. The second signal is given by binding of toll-like receptors to uh, PAMPs like LPS. So both these signals when activated put results in B cell proliferation and differentiation. B cell activation by T independent pathway depends upon the type of antigens for the number of signals required for activation and proliferation of B cells. They are called TI1 and TI2. The TI1 or T independent antigen 1 is the one which causes activation of B cells by two signals. As we have discussed in the last slide, the first signal is provided by binding of the B cell receptors to the epitope and the second signal is provided by the toll-like receptors binding to the uh, PAMPs. So two signals are required in T1 antigen. So in this case simultaneous activation of B cells receptors and other receptors on B cells like CD14 induces B cell proliferation and differentiation. However, in case of TI2 or T independent antigen 2, as it is multivalent, it results in extensive cross linking of B cells by repetitive polysaccharides or protein epitope. So, no second signal is required. This figure shows a generalized T independent B cell activation involving two signals. That is, the antigen is T independent antigen type 1. So, the first signal is provided when the B cell receptors bind to the epitopes present on the surface of the antigen. And the second signal is provided by recognition of other molecules on the antigens like toll like receptors. This results in a signal transduction to the nucleus and eventual proliferation and differentiation of B cells into plasma cells which then secrete IgM 
Remember, there are little or no memory cells produced by this pathway. B cells originate and mature in the bone marrow. The mature naive B cells have B cell receptors for recognizing specific antigens. These mature B cells leave the bone marrow, and, they recirculate between the blood, the secondary lymphoid tissues, and, the lymph. When these naive B cells encounter their specific antigens, they get activated and differentiate into antibody-producing plasma cells and memory B cells. There are two ways by which a B cell can get activated. These are T-cell independent activation and T-cell dependent activation. This classification is based on the type of antigen encountered by the B cells. Let's understand this further. In the previous video lecture, we studied that B cell signaling requires clustering or cross linking of B cell receptors on antigen recognition. This clustering of B cell receptors is required to activate the accessory proteins Ig alpha and Ig beta. The antigen binding signal is then conveyed to the nucleus. This clustering of B cell receptors depends on the type of antigen encountered. For example, this antigen is having multiple repeating epitopes that can directly cross link B cell receptors. Such antigens can activate B cells to produce antibodies without T cell help. Examples of such antigens are polysaccharides, glycolipids, and nucleic acids. Therefore, the antigens, which can trigger B cell activation without T cell help, are called T independent or thymus independent antigens. And this B cell activation, without T cell help, is known as T independent B cell activation. But most of the antigens are proteins in their chemical nature. They form the largest group of antigens, but they do not contain multiple repeating units. This makes the cross-linking of B-cell receptors difficult. So, when a B-cell encounters protein antigens, T-cell help is required to trigger B-cell activation. Antigens that trigger B-cell activation, with the help of T-helper cells, are known as T-dependent or thymus-dependent antigens. And, B-cell activation which requires T-cell help, is known as T-dependent B-cell activation. In this video lecture we'll study T-independent B-cell activation. Let's say this is a T-independent antigen. This means it is multivalent. It is composed of repetitive and identical epitopes. B cell recognizes and binds to this antigen. Clustering of B cell receptors triggers the B cell activation. This is the first signal for T independent activation. To get fully activated, these B cells require a second signal. This signal can be derived from other molecules present on the antigen. For example, B cells also have toll like receptors that can recognize the various microbial surface molecules. This recognition and binding to the antigen by toll like receptors generates second signal for T independent B cell activation. After activation, these B cells differentiate into plasma cells that mainly secrete IgM antibodies. Memory cells are not produced, or if produced, they are very less. This is because memory cell production requires T cell help. So, this was T independent B cell activation. In the next video lecture, we will study in detail the T dependent B cell activation. 